Hello and welcome to my class. In this video, I am going to discuss the salient features and examples of order Odonata, which includes the dragonflies and the damselflies. In my last video, I had talked about the characters of order Zygentoma, which included primitive insects. Insects of order Odonata can also be considered as primitive insects. The fossil records show that ancestral Odonata existed even in the Carboniferous era and the Permian era. That is, they have flown around the world for more than 350 million years. They existed even before the dinosaurs. Here is a picture of a fossil that was found in Germany and is approximately 150 million years old. Now, earlier, like the fossils which are found from the Carboniferous era, those fossils show that ancestral odonata were really huge in size. Their wingspan was spread about two feet. But the fossils from Permian era are about the same size of the living odonata. However big or however small they were, they existed in the world for many, many years. Now let's see how we can divide order Odonata. Order Odonata is divided into three suborders. Suborder Anisoptera, which includes all the dragonflies. Suborder Zygoptera, which includes all the damselflies. And Suborder Anisozygoptera, which includes mostly fossil species. There are two living species which are found in Japan and India. One example is Apioflebia. Now let's go into the salient features of order Odonata. Most of the insects are brilliantly colored. Either they are colored in the body and lightly colored in the wings or the wings can be transparent but sometimes the wings are also colored. Unfortunately, unlike butterflies, Odonata insects or dragonflies and damselflies cannot be preserved with their colors. If they are preserved as museum specimens, they lose their color. But when they are alive, they are really brightly colored. These insects are predaceous. They are voracious eaters, both as adults and as naiads or the aquatic nymphs. They feed on other insects. They are very effective hunters, they hunt for other insects like mosquitoes, uh, hymenopterans and so on and they feed on them. They are also predators of butterflies. These insects are medium sized to large sized and they have two sub-equal wings in each side. So two pairs of wings and each pair is different in size than the other. These insects are mostly active on sunny days. On sunny days, if you look at the sky, you would see many dragonflies flying, especially if there is an aquatic body around. But there are some species which are also active at night. The adults are aerial, but the naiads or the nymphs are aquatic. So they reproduce in water, they lay their eggs in water, and the eggs hatch into the nymphs or the naiads and those naiads live in water. When the naiads mature, the adults come out and those adults are aerial. That is, they move around in the sky or they, are, they sit on the trees and so on. Now let's look at the head. Their head is hypognathus which means that the head is perpendicular to the body or the mouth parts are arranged perpendicular to the rest of the body. They, the head is exceptionally mobile. They can move their head in all the directions. And this head is attached with the thorax by a slender neck. The mouth parts are ectognathus. Ectognathus means that the maxillae and mandibles will be outside the head cavity. The mandibles are strongly toothed. Because they are voracious eaters, they need some apparatus to chew on other insects. So their mandibles serve that purpose and mandibles are strongly toothed. The antenna are really short. 
These antenna are three to seven segmented and they are bristle-like, very tiny. And if you are seeing from a distance, you won't even see those antenna. They are really fine and minute. There is a pair of well-developed compound eyes and three ocelli present. Here you can see the three ocelli. Ocelli are the simple eyes and they also have very large well-developed compound eyes. Let's talk about the thorax. Thorax has three segments like all insects, prothorax, mesothorax and metathorax. But the prothorax is reduced and the meso and metathorax are fused together. Now, let's look at this part. These sclerites are known as pleurites or pleurots. In most insects, these pleurites are lateral to, I mean, the pleurites are the lateral sclerites and in most insects, they are straight. But in case of odoneta insects, these pleurites are in a slant. Because of this slant, they push the targites of the thorax backward and push the sternum or the ventral uh, sclerites to the front. As a result, the wings are pushed backward and the legs are pushed forward. So the legs happen to be close to the mouth and the wings happen to be close to the abdomen. Now the legs are short, spiny, and they are unfit for walking. Their main mode of locomotion is flying. The legs have three segmented tarsi. These legs are only used for holding onto a substrate when they sit. They do not walk like cockroaches or other such insects. They just fly around. Okay, let's look at the wings. The wings are long, transparent, they can be colored, but they are mostly transparent. And if you look at the vein structure, they are known as net veined because these veins make a net like structure. There are a large number of cells in odoneta wings. These small structures in between two uh, parallel veins and two horizontal, uh, two uh, longitudinal and two horizontal veins is known as a cell. There are many cells in odoneta wings and it looks like a net. So they are known as net vein. Now I want you to notice this spot here. This is a dark cell which is known as pterostigma and this is a thickening of the wing membrane between C and R. What is C? C is the costa or this vein. The first vein is known as costa. The second one which starts from here but ends here is known as subcosta and the third one is the radius. You can see that this pterostigma is found in between costa and radius that is C and R. And here is another thing. The vein subcosta ends in a conspicuous nodus or incision near the middle of the costal margin. So this is the costal margin and near the middle of this would be the middle but near the middle of the costal margin the vein subcosta ends in a conspicuous nodus or incision. So pterostigma and nodus these are two typical characteristics of odoneta wings. Now, this pterostigma may be absent in a few species, but mostly they will be present. And this pterostigma is present in all the wings. Now, these wings are also known as paleopteran wings. The reason is these insects cannot fold their wings against their abdomen or over their abdomen. The abdomen and that is why they are known as paleopteran wings. All the modern day insects other than mayflies and odoneta insects, they can fold their wings against their abdomen. But odoneta insects and mayflies cannot do that. So they are known to have the paleopteran wings. 
The abdomen has 10 segments which are very distinct and the 11th segment is vestigial. In the male, it forms a supraanal plate. Let's talk about the copulation because the copulation is very interesting in case of odonata insects. You can see here that the male and the female has formed a mating wheel. This heart-shaped structure that is formed by their abdomens and their whole body is known as a mating wheel. What happens in this case is that the males have two types of genitalia. The primary genitalia is at the end of the abdomen, but there is a secondary genitalia which is in the second and third abdominal segment, in the ventral side of the second and third uh, abdominal segment. Now, the abdominal tip of the male passes the sperm and that sperm is transferred to the secondary genitalia of the male. The male bends the abdomen and the abdominal tip touches the touches this area where the secondary uh, genitalia is and the sperm is transferred there. In some odonatons, it is done before the male meets the female and in some cases, it happens just after the male finds the female. Now, once the sperm has transferred to this area, this area is used or the abdominal tip is used for holding the female. In case of uh, during the copulation, the male grasps the female by means of its anal appendages. Anal appendages are at the tip of the abdomen and in the region of the neck of the female in anisoptera or the prothorax in zygoptera. So, in case of dragonflies, the male holds the female near the neck region and in case of damselflies, the, the male holds the female in the prothorax area. So, here we can see that this is a pair of damselflies and here the male holds the female in the prothorax area. Now, presence of secondary copulatory organs is in the second and third abdominal segment so, the sperm has transferred there and therefore, the female's abdominal tip has to touch this area. So, once the male grabs the female in the neck or the prothorax region, the female bends its body and through its abdominal tip, it touches the secondary uh, genitalia of the male. And from here, the sperm is transferred inside the female. So, this is a very unique mating behavior found in odonata insects. Here you can see that the leaf blade is moving but the insect's posture does not change. Let's now talk about oviposition. Because through copulation, mating has happened, sperm has been transferred, the eggs are fertilized now and the eggs are, fertilized eggs are ready to be laid. Odonates are oviparous. That means that they lay eggs. Now, oviposition may be exophytic or endophytic. What is exophytic? Exophytic means that it happens on some trees or on some aquatic plants, but it is not inserted inside the plant tissue. Endophytic means that the eggs are inserted inside the aquatic plants. So, in case of dragonflies, the eggs are freely dropped on aquatic bodies. Here you can see a dragonfly which is laying its eggs and it is just dropping the eggs into the water. These eggs will float and it will get attached to some aquatic plants. In case of damselflies, they, the females have 
functional ovipositor in case of dragonflies they have vestigial ovipositor or uh, full ovipositor but not as functional as the uh, damsel flies so in case of damsel flies they have fully functional ovipositors and those ovipositors are used to lay the eggs which are inserted into some aquatic plant tissue now once the eggs hatch the naiads would come out this is how the dragonflies naiads look like they have the prothoracic legs and their body is kind of spindle shaped now there is a difference between the dragonflies uh, naiads and the damselflies naiads in anisoptera or dragonflies the respiration takes place through concealed rectal gills so because they are aquatic they need gills for respiration now these gills are present either in concealed rectum or they are concealed inside the rectum as in dragonflies or they can be outside the body like caudal gills so they will look like fish tails so that is found in damselfly naiads so if you have a naiad like this if you do not see the gills outside then it is a dragonfly naiad and if you see the gills outside like this then it would be a damselfly naiad now in the beginning i said that order odonata includes dragonflies and damselflies now let's see how we can differentiate dragonflies and damselflies or suborder anisoptera and suborder zygoptera eyes meet meet dorsally in many and occupy major part of the head here you can see in case of dragonflies the compound eyes are really large and the two eyes touch each other but in case of damsel flies the eyes are protruded laterally and there is a gap in between two compound eyes the occiput vertex and frons which are sclerites of the head they are distinct but in this case they are less distinct or the sutures are absent so the demarcation between these sclerites or the sutures are either less distinct or they are absent wings are held horizontally at rest and here wings are held vertically at rest okay so in dragonflies you would see when they are sitting the wings are held horizontally and in case of damselflies the wings are held vertically dragonflies are very strong flyers they can fly at 100 kilometers per hour speed sometimes but damsel flies are not that good flyers their flying is more awkward and they are not as good as the dragonflies in flying and their flying speed is also less than the dragonflies dragonflies can fly very fast and they can hunt very easily in the sky dragonflies body is stout whereas in damselflies the body is more slender the male here possesses two superior and one inferior anal appendages and penis here is jointed here the male possesses two superior and two inferior anal appendages so here there are 2 plus 1 and here there are 2 plus 2 two superior two inferior here two superior one inferior and penis is not distinctly jointed ovipositor is normal or vestigial in case of dragonflies i showed you that their eggs are laid into the water and their eggs are exophytic so their oviposition is exophytic they do not have to insert their eggs inside any aquatic plants but here the ovipositors are functional and the ovipositors are used to insert the eggs inside the aquatic plants here is a small video of a dragonfly and i hope you enjoyed this video please come for my next video where i will 
explain the salient features and examples of ordered hemiptera.